What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another video and this time we're going to take a look at more recent sales for the Vintage Collection and can my thumbnail get any more boring and generic? I just ran out of energy. I didn't feel like putting together a nice thumbnail for once. So this is what you get. Congratulations. It's a really boring thumbnail. But I did put together some pretty nice ones here. We've got ungraded, some graded, and some interesting sales. We've got a Jar Jar in Carbonite that sold at an auction. And we got just the packaging for the SDCC uh, Death Star set. Just the packaging went for a big price. So I wanted to show you all that and more as we dig in here. And the first one we're going to start off with is VC01 Dengar. Uh, pretty nice looking example here that was very clean. Maybe just some very light edge wear at the very top of the card, but uh, pretty minimal. Pretty minimal. This card looked to be in pretty great shape overall, and it sold for $75 plus $12 shipping. I found two other recent sales. One of them also for $75 and another one for $78. So $75 is the price target for VC01 Dengar. Obviously, we know the reissue's coming, but uh, that's a pretty nice looking example. Uh, next up is a Clone Trooper 501st Legion from the Revenge of the Sith. This was an unpunched U.S. card with the Darth Maul offer. This one just sold at an auction for $101. And I did find a couple of other data points that were kind of right in line with that price point. So if you want that 501st Legion Clone Trooper on that Revenge of the Sith card back, that'll set you back about $100 plus shipping. Uh, Anakin Skywalker name pill Revenge of the Sith. This is a punched example. This one sold for $112.50. And that, that seems to have come back down just a little bit. Obviously, the unpunched is where the big money is. But uh, this punch example seems to be kind of coming back down to earth. $112.50 plus shipping took that home. Uh, we had a foil Ultimate Galactic Hunt Obi-Wan Kenobi VC-16. This one sold in a buy it now situation for $130. And I found another one at 125 and another one at 140 So that this one kind of sold right in the middle there and gives you a data point. I know a couple of you mentioned that you're looking to complete the entire run of those foil card backs. So if you're looking for Obi-Wan, about 125 to 135 is a going rate right now. Uh, next up, we had another foil. This is the Boba Fett VC-09. And this one sold for $135. I don't remember the exact number, but there was another one that sold... Uh, maybe a month or so ago that was kind of right around that same price point, 130 to 140 This one did have some edge wear at the very bottom of the card there by the proof of purchase or the uh, UPC code, excuse me. And, um, you know, it was pretty minor though, but overall the rest of the card looked to be in pretty good shape. One little ding right there on the bottom of the card back below the Kenner logo. But anyway, that gives you a rough price point for a couple of foils since I know a few of, the, a few of you are looking for those. Uh, here was that Jeremy Bullock signed uh, VCPO3 rocket firing Boba Fett mail away. And a couple of you asked while the auction was going what it was sell for. I was like, I don't know, 150 to 200. He's like, well, it's already at 190. So that shows you I have no idea what these go for. But it's, it's not very often you find a Jeremy Bullock signed TVC. He usually signs like the Power of the Force line or something else. But uh, this one was a pretty cool example, and it did sell in an auction for two forty seven fifty. And I also have one other autograph that sold, and that's the Obi Wan Kenobi Wandering Jedi on the Obi Wan uh, packaging there. So that's a pretty cool one. That one did include the James Spence authentication kind of certificate, and you can see there that Ewan McGregor signed that two hundred three fifty. That's a good price if you ask me. I don't know what he charges, to, you know, at these conventions and things like that to sign, but I have to believe that this was a pretty good deal at two hundred three fifty. And just a side note, if you have something like this where you already have the JSA certificate, you can still send this in to Collector Archive Services for the Signature Series grading, and they won't charge you the grading fee, the, the grading of or the authentication of the autograph fee of thirty five dollars if you send in the JSA certificate with it. They'll say, okay, well, it's already been cert certified by JSA. You don't need to, to pay it again. Uh, it would just be kind of like double paying. So uh, just to, that's just a note for those of you that like to grade and authenticate you know, autographed items with collector archive services because they do a great job and they look awesome. But just send in the JSA certificate with the item and then all you got to do is pay the grading fee for the actual item. You don't have to repay 
the autograph authentication fee. Uh, next up was Wedge Antilles. I've got a few kind of budget-friendly items here coming up. Uh, Wedge Antilles VC28. This one sold for $53. Uh, pretty good buy there. I mean, I've seen them buy it now for a little bit less, but this one did look pretty clean. And uh, Bomb Vinden is one that I haven't talked about recently. A couple of you have asked about him, and I was like, I haven't, I haven't looked at him or what he sells for, but very reasonably priced. And, you know, it's just another kind of cool Cantina alien. This was an unpunched U.S. card with the Darth Maul offer sticker kind of right on his head there, but uh, it was only 32 bucks plus shipping. So that's a pretty budget-friendly item if you want to fill in a few holes from your TVC 1.0 collection. And then next up was Darth Sidious. This one, um, I think it was, an un yeah, it was an unpunched U.S. card, Darth Maul offer again. And it, that was a really clean example. That one sold for $72, so that one's come back down a little bit. Uh, but a pretty nice-looking example for the original issue, Darth Sidious. Uh, next up, let's dig back into some other items. We all know about VC64, and it seems like every single episode, there's another one that has sold at auction, so I try to include it. But Slave Leia, uh, this one had the prototype FET offer, and this was the return of the Jedi packaging. This one sold in an auction for 305 plus shipping on 33 bids. That one closed on July 16th. So on the low end, maybe with some slight damage, maybe 250 to 275 $300 when it's in really good shape. This one looked to be in pretty good shape overall. Uh, that's a pretty good buy at 305 if you ask me. It's 350 kind of seems to be the normal rate for a near mint to near mint plus example. But, uh, you know, just looking at the photos, it looked really, really clean. And uh, 305 was a pretty good buy there. Uh, Darth Vader, VC-115, The Emperor's Wrath. My oh my, have times changed? This one used to go for like as high as $300. This one was a buy it now situation, best offer accepted of $145. And this one was the US card unpunched and it looked very, very clean overall. So that price has really come way, way back down. I mean, this thing was almost selling for double or if not more than that uh, this time last year. But like everything, collectibles have come back down to, to reality in price. And this really clean example sold for $145, best offer accepted. Uh, next up, I do have a few graded items, and then we got some other items after that that are not graded, but this was an uncirculated 9.25 Barris Offy with the Darth Maul offer. And great looking card back. I love that card image. And this one sold in an auction for $125. That's a good price for a very high grade AFA example of Barris Offy. Uh, next up was Obi-Wan. This was an AFA 9.0. This one sold for $165 free shipping. I just sold my CAS 90 uh, for 100 I think it was $125 shipping. So somebody got a pretty fair deal, I feel like. Uh, I sold that one on Rogue 5 for $125. The AFA 9.0 sold for $165 free shipping. Um, Power Droid always has these beautiful uncirculated or very high grade TVC 1.0 unpunched for sale. We've documented a few really nice examples and he had three more that just sold here recently. Uh, the first being the Gungan Warrior. This was an uncirculated 9.0 uh, US card unpunched. That one sold for $150 plus $19 shipping and I've seen almost that price for an ungraded example so I thought that price was pretty fair there. Uh, he also had this one, which I had in my What to Buy video last week. This is that Republic Trooper on the original issue, character debut sticker, AFA 9.0. This was not an uncirculated designation, but it was a 9.0. That one sold for $224.50, so that one went even a little bit higher than I expected. I was expecting kind of $200-ish, so uh, $225 plus another $19 shipping took that one home, although that was a beautiful example. And then finally, uh, this seller also had an uncirculated 9.0 Super Battle Droid unpunched card. And this is one of those sneaky ones that I've talked about in the past that has really gone up in price. This one sold for $330 plus $19 shipping. So almost $350 for an AFA uncirculated 9.0 Super Battle Droid. And I, I had noticed that ungraded, these have been kind of creeping up in price, especially unpunched. And so I was curious to see if this one would sell, but it did finally sell at about $350 after shipping. Uh, next up, we had Grogu from the Razor Crest. This is the pack-in example with the chrome 
prom. And wow, the, this one has really continued to drop in price. This one sold in an auction for $50 plus $7.35 shipping. I mean, right out of the gate after the Razor Crest started to get into people's hands, this one was going for like $150 or more. And so now it's selling for about less than a third of that at $50. I mean, I was thinking like $80, maybe $75. But $50 for a pretty nice looking example of the Grogu Razor Crest pack in. Uh, next up, here is the packaging for that SDCC Death Star set. And this is just for the box, okay? This is just for the box. And it sold for $600. So it's pretty incredible what even just the packaging now for this SDCC set sells for. And the packaging, admittedly, did look to be in really great condition. But it, again, it's just the packaging. It doesn't include any of the actual mint on cards that were packed in. And it did sell for $600 free shipping. So that's a big number and pretty incredible, really. Uh, finally, we had the Jar Jar Binks in Carbonite. And this one was an unpunched, beautiful example. This one sold for $560. $560. And it looked to be pretty clean overall. Maybe one little light, light crease in the upper left-hand corner on the back of the card back. But overall, in pretty great shape. And, uh, you know, that's a pretty good price, really. $560, just given what sometimes these can sell for when they're graded. You know, AFA 85s or so can set you back quite a bit more than that. So $560 plus $1065 shipping is the latest data point I've got for you for the Jar Jar Binks in Carbonite. That closed on July 16th. Uh, with 16 bids. So anyway, some pretty interesting sales there. That SDCC box for $600 or whatever, was it $600? $600 just for the packaging for the SDCC set. That was the biggest shocker to me. Uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching. As always, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll be back soon.